ভারত মার্কিন বাণিজ্যিক সম্পর্ক সুদৃঢ়করণের লক্ষ্যে সম্প্রতি নতুন দিল্লিতে ইন্দো আমেরিকান চেম্বার অফ কমার্সের উদ্যোগে আয়োজিত হয়েছিল দুদিনের ইকোনমিক সামিট আর সেই উপলক্ষেই ইন্দো আমেরিকান চেম্বার অফ কমার্সের নবনিযুক্ত প্রেসিডেন্ট অশোক লাহা ক্যালকলিংকে দেওয়া এক একান্ত সাক্ষাৎকারে জানালেন তিনি উদ্যোগ নিচ্ছেন দুদেশের বাণিজ্যিক সম্পর্কের কাঠামোকে মজবুত ভিদের ওপর গড়ে তুলতে ইন্দো ইউএস ইকোনমিক সামিট ইটস এ ফেয়ারলি ইন্টারেস্টিং ইউ নো হোয়াট ইউ ট্রাই টু ডু ইস টু আফটার দ্য মিস্টার মোদিজ ভিজিট টু ইউএস হি টকড অ্যাবাউট লটস অফ এরিয়াজ অ্যান্ড উই ট্রাই টু অ্যাড্রেস দোজ এরিয়াজ সাম অফ এরিয়াজ নট অল অফ দেম সাম অফ এরিয়াজ ইনফ্রাস্ট্রাকচার স্কিল অ্যান্ড ডেভেলপমেন্ট স্কিল ডেভেলপমেন্ট ই কমার্স সাইবার সিকিউরিটি ডিফেন্স ইউ নো সাম অফ এরিয়াজ উই অ্যাড্রেস ইট বিকজ এ টু ডেজ সেমিনার অ্যান্ড উই ওয়েন্ট টু ইন ডিটেলস বেসিক্যালি উই ট্রাই টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দ্যাট উই টেক এ টাইটেল অ্যান্ড ট্রাই টু আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দ্যাট হোয়াট আর দ্য ইস্যুস আর দ্যাট ওয়ার ইউ স্ট্যান্ড রাইট নাও হোয়াট ইউ হ্যাভ টু ডু টু মুভ অ্য হেড হোয়াট আর দিস রিয়েলিস্টিকলি ক্যান ডু ইউ নো and uh, and it was a very interesting because us embassy they supported us we used the logo this is the first time that happened and lots of people from the us embassy they they want, they supported us they actively participated while you are putting the program together you know the another area was the hospitality and us us embassy uh, the commerce commercial counselor the commercial minister they call it as john he participated in that you know he actually drove us because the hospital is one of the big thing today so it's this by its affiliation or recognition recognition yeah you know and so i think there is a huge opportunity there you know is basically there are lots of buzz going on right now lots of mood is different you know so because in the us in the american chamber of commerce is the bilateral only bilateral organization we only address the us business so we try to address some of the issues not all of them some of the issues and try to see how to move forward in the sense that how our members can benefit doing a business in us in those areas as well as the some of the us companies you know how they can do a business with us and how to can help them out so that's the whole purpose of us in the us summit what are things we came up with is a summit and throughout the next one year that's my goal is to we are going to address all of them you know we to start with we may start to bring some delegation from here to there to us we try to bring some delegation from us to come here we may have a some localized seminar certain areas you know and that the, the where it, some of the problem can be resolved in more details you know mr what mr modi talked about it will not be just it's not a magic would happen one day but we are going to we are in the us in the american chamber of commerce we are going to participate in move forward just to put a somewhat uncomfortable question that normally these chamber of commerce and other industry bodies they are often considered or perceived to be just talk shops they organize seminars summits and all that and on ground zero nothing actually happens so during your tenure what would you lay most trust on so that something or things get done actually i think i think you are you are perfectly right you know the um, some some of the people talk about uh, the chambers as a club you know I have heard the comment from the American Chamber of Commerce uh, AmCham which I am a member you know I heard that some people some members openly talked about it is the club of the big business community nothing happens every drinks lots of talk you know but I think uh, we want to I want to do um, uh, move forward you know I will address certain areas you know we already talking with one of the uh, groups Uh, started talking to another group back in US and we are trying to bring a delegation from here and we are trying to find out the timing you know probably the January February time frame 
or after uh, uh, end of April, you know, that we are trying to find out what the right time to do that for terms of delegation. Hopefully our members can get some business in that area, you know, some of the areas. So it's all up to the leadership, you know. It's much easier to just to Chamber of Commerce and do that, but I, I, I intend to do, do something, you know, and my uh, two vice president, other people, they want to do something because one of the advantage we got uh, as compared to the big, a big, a big one, free KCI, we are much smaller, only 2,500 members. So we are much more agile. Our decision making is much faster, you know. Our uh, and all of us run a business of our own, right? And they are a small business. So, so compared to that, we know how to be active, participate. You know, we have to make a decision fast and move forward. Lean and small. Lean and small. We have to be lean and small. You know, so that's the one of the advantages our leadership has got. Uh, that's what we are planning to do. But again, you know, it's much easier not to do anything, you know, but I intend to do it. As Mr. Modi has suggested, or he actually called for the Indian American should put their own foot in the US and the other in India. Mm -hmm. so you are already one of them who has um, is one foot in the US and the other in the US, India. Yes. So what do you do to encourage others to follow suit? Well, um, you know, I'm I'm doing it because um, you know I lived in U.S. for a long time, a U.S. citizen. We started the company in India, in the U.S., and we got a Indian subsidiary. So I'm so I'm coming back and forth in almost six months. The danger is that you know it's a question that jail uh, thing is that um, the glass is half empty or half full. How do you take a look at it? You know, I take a look at the half full always. You know. Some people in the U.S., you know, I've seen some of the Indians, not all of them, you know, the, lots of people that are excited to come to India right now. Uh, but lots of people have said, oh, there's, you know, nothing works in India, you know, roads are bad, pollution is bad, electricity is bad. You know, if you want to talk about everything is bad, yeah, there are lots of things bad. But there are lots of pluses there. You know, I look at the plus part of it, you know, I, got a, I have got a specific reason why I'm here, you know. And uh, and uh, there are lots of advantages to be here, you know. Ultimately, I grew up in this country, you know. I don't do for the charity, my personal needs, but I enjoy being here as well as being in U.S. You know, U.S. has got lots of pluses, lots of work ethics and everything I learned from U.S., management style, everything I learned from U.S. But here are also lots of pluses there. You know, so it also, I policy is individually per people to people, but I expect that lots of people are coming today. Lots of people, they come here. Lots of experts, they'll come here, they'll stay here. I know lots of American experts, they, they're staying here today. They're your citizen, they're coming here and staying here today. Yeah, you see, I think that uh, what I'm, uh, government India has to be more active, you know. The, if I, so far, you know, Mr. Modi is too new to make any comment about that. But in the past, uh, government of India, for whatever reason, they don't do an active peer in the U.S. You know, I look at the Israel. You know, Israel is such an active peer. Everybody in the U.S. they are pro-Israel. Not a single senator, if they want to be anti-Israel, they lose their election, you know. Uh, so, and they, they, they praise and everything else, they're always writing positive things about Israel, you know. And so is China. There's a positive buzz in the U.S. about China. Positive buzz, you know. There are the pictures and everything else. I'm sure that you know, Chinese press, the Chinese government has to do with the PR and everything else, you know, influence the reporters and everything else, you know, do that. Government of India, I don't think, I've never seen it. They spend any, any effort 
to actually influence the Washington Post or New York Times or or Wall Street Journal or CNN or CBS, CBC or CBS or NBC to write any positive article about India in a prime time. I've never seen that. I have never seen anybody come in the TV talk positively about India. You hear lots of positive things about Israel. I don't hear any anything there. You know, they don't I don't know where they spend the money on it, but they don't spend the time there, you know. So if Mr. Modi is I think probably he has done an effective job in putting an effort together, you know. You know, he is a different person. So I hope that that will happen. That will give you impression, you know, because no matter what I say, if people hear that nice article in Time Magazine about India, nice articles in a uh, New York Times, you know, the place to be there, play, fun place to be there, all other stuff, then people say, yeah, let's go, let's go there, you know. People want to have a, uh, you know, if you, in the US, you made money, right, you know, up to the age of 40, 50. And uh, so, if you want to come here, what do you like to do? You like to have a decent medical system, decent place to live in, you know, housing and everything, and, and place to live in, you know. There is no reason why people, and people are moving here, but there are more people coming. I expect that. I'm hopeful, I'm a positive person. I'm hopeful that lots of people are coming. You mentioned about China, many people think that China has become what it is today because of this coming back or return of a large number of non-resident Chinese. Yes. Who had one so could you do anything towards this goal so that non-resident Indians can also come back from the UN? I think I think that you should do. You know that once you create that image, you know, it's easy to live in a nicely. You know, so given the fact that. Your standard of living, from a dollar terms, you don't get the same salaries, but the people can come with the expat or salaries. But you still can make a decent living here, because standard of living is lower compared to U.S. standard of living. You can make a decent living, and at the end of the day, you know, what do you do, you know? And if you got a good medical profession and a good work environment, then uh, China produced the given the people, you know. Uh, if you are a Chinese bright engineer, you know, or the mid-level manager, right? I probably will be in the U.S. working with American corporation in California or some other place, you know. And if I'm working with a big company like Google or, you know, or say on a, on a, uh, GM or some other people or IBM, then I'll be from the maybe uh, three or four level. I, I, There'll be different between me and the CEO, probably another five or six layers there. Hmm. So, in a plain English, I'll have not too much influence on the company profitability or something like that. And uh, I don't have it. I, I, I've been put in a box. I can only do that part of it. If I go to China or India, for that matter, I have much more influence on that. Yes. You know, much more influence on that because you know that knowledge I got, the technology I know, the management style I know, I can bring it much better because they are much more important here. And so that's why the, it appeals to lots of people, you know, do you want to be a, you know, you know, do you want to work in a small company or a big company? Similarly, go to subsidiary and you can be something like that, you know. Like I was very excited, you know, I'm telling from my own experience when I was working with the Cadence. You know, and Karen sent me to India to manage India, right? Before that, I was a uh, cost center manager, manager of cost center. Right? You know, I got a bunch of people there reporting at 15, 20, 30 people there, you know. All of a sudden, when I came here, you know, and basically it's almost like a, somebody threw me, threw me in a uh, deep pool, swimming to swim out or get out or die. And I have to know, I have to work with the government, I have to work with the U.S. Embassy, I have to know the finance. I first time I have to understand the balance sheet, you know, I have to talk with the sales people, I have to talk with the government officials here, all other stuff, you know, every part of the business. Because I'm here, all of a sudden I'm running a PNL, 
given that's not a big PNL, but that still is a big, that's a PNL. So all facets of the PNL is there. And that's a tremendous knowledge. You know, all of us think there are lots of things I have to learn. You know, so that's the advantage of working for a small company, you can do that. Similarly, the Chinese who are living to US and they're going to China, they're building something. They're needed. Indian, Indian industry needs lots of great people. You know, our education system, you know, if you can bring some of the uh, professors or some of the young professors from the US, they come here, teach them for three, four years, they can make a lots of difference. You know, they can build, a, they can produce a lots of difference in the industry. Once I hired a girl, uh, uh, surprisingly, this girl um, was from Harvard Business School, just finished her degree, and she's of Indian origin. So she called me, she said, can I come to India, work with you for six months? After six months, I'll go back because I'm getting married, and I got a job in the Texas, I'll go back. But I'll take the six months off and come to India to understand Indian culture. Are you sure? You know, come on here. Surprisingly, the amount of things he added value, you know, is a, a huge. Because he gave a completely different perspective to the other people also, you know. Other people, they think the same way. And here I talk, talk with them and they say, yeah, he's an old man who listen to it. Here's a young girl, always talking about this one, do this way, do this way, do this way. And she is putting an example. She is coming here early morning and leaving five o'clock, six or seven o'clock, eight o'clock, you know, and that's a completely different, create a completely different environment. So anybody who lives in U.S. and uh, come here for, you know, we need those people. That should be tremendous, you know, and uh, Indians will be extremely, I think they can help, they can help tremendously to build the company. I'm sure that lots of Indian manager may, may disagree, you know, but I can see that there's a huge difference between the culture there, yeah. This is like somewhat what Swami Vivekananda said 100 and 150 years ago that the best of both worlds should come yeah. together. Yes, yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. You know, there are lots of things you know U.S. offers. The you know the um, respect of the deadline, milestones. Deadline means something. If I give you a commitment, I honor the commitment. You know, and uh, those are the things you did that. And of course, there's the implied threat. If you don't do it, you'll be out the door. You know, they're very simple, you know. So, uh, so there, you know, US and plus education system, plus competitiveness, huge, it's a competitive world. And everybody is there, particularly in California, Silicon Valley, everybody dreams to be a millionaire by the age of 30. You know, that's everybody's. They work long hours. Just and they're going to start a company. It's a, it's a completely different. Silicon Valley is a completely different culture. Everybody wants to be a millionaire by the age of 30. We are, we are, we are, we are uh, seriously planning to work with the, some of the universities. You know, it's a planning stage of us. You know, probably within a month we can probably figure it out. And to see how to build the skill, you know. You see, the skills basically. If you do the manufacturing part of it, right, then is that education system is geared to produce people we need in a manufacturing world or any industry business, you know? Do we need the, what do we need, what really we need, you know? Our education system is completely obsolete, you know? Sorry to say that, you know, you know, and so, that's the one of that sort of, you know, so can you train people to do the business needs and business needs are changing, you know, what it takes to business in the business needs, you know. I know, I know one of my relatives, kids, just finished the MBA, unemployed, you know, they asked me, do we want to hire this person? I look at the guy, I said, no, I don't hire the person, the person doesn't know anything, what are, what are you going to do in my company, you know. I can give them money to help him out until he can find a job. That's my personal money, but I'm not going to hire the person. So, so there are lots of people like that. They're unemployable. You know, the skill development is then, 
they should help able to produce exactly what you need to train people to the the factory needs, industry needs. Industry is changing. Industry is going to change. Different type of industry will come in the today. You know how to put those people there. Yeah. Are you in talks with some of the US uh, maybe finishing schools or uh, skill development? We are, we are going to do that first. We are going to start with some of the Indian Indian uni universities. See whether they can be a conduit between both of them, whether they can help them to do the business. You know, uh, we are. Uh, trying to maybe uh, already talking to some of the institutes, maybe you can train some people so that they can be employable in the organizations. You know, I don't want to get into the training business because we are a non-profit organization, but we can probably come up with certain plans to that. You know, and to me that that's most one of the most important thing. If you can accomplish something in that area, that will be terrific. You know, that will be terrific.